Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. Oh, my husband Garu and I just came back from vacation and we had a wonderful time exploring the southwestern coast of oh. New Brunswick, Canada. Specifically, we went to Grand Manan and that's a place that even though I'm from New Brunswick <laughs> and only live two and a half hours from there, I had never been and I always wanted to go. So we had a wonderful vacation and now we're back and I want to share a few pictures of you of our vacation because the inspiration for this week's painting came from there. And uh, well, you'll see, it's beautiful. So that's why I was so inspired to create this little painting. It's a whimsical little landscape or a seascape, I guess is what you should call it because Grand Manan is a beautiful island. And so there are lots of views of the ocean uh, from the coast of Grand Manan. And uh, yeah, we had a wonderful vacation. We're happy to be back here in Maine, enjoying the beautiful weather, but we're very thankful we had the lovely week that we had in Grand Manan. So here are a few pictures from our vacation. I hope you'll enjoy them. And once I'm done showing you that, I'll move on to the beginning of my video. And I hope you'll feel inspired to either join me or if you just want to relax and sit back, enjoy a cup of your favorite brew with me. That sounds wonderful too. Enjoy, sweet friends. I didn't mention it earlier, but we were lucky enough to have my father-in-law, Jeff, join us for the first part of our vacation. While we were blessed to have him here with us, we were exploring some parts of Maine that he'd never had a chance to see, like the Penobscot Bridge, Fort Knox, which is what you're seeing right now. And we were able to find these little birdies nested in one of um, the fort's tunnels, which was really, really neat. Then we went on to Campobello Island and we explored at the Roosevelt Cottage and some local lighthouses and had a really fun time together. We had a really fun weekend of exploring together and once the weekend was over, Jeff made his way back home and Damien and I Damien Garou and I continued on to Grand Manet. Thankfully, the temperatures on the way to Grand Manet were much cooler than they were in Maine, and we were thankful for that because we were having a heat wave in Maine. So we really took advantage of the fact that it was beautiful and sunny and cooler so we could go hiking and explore the local lighthouses and all the beautiful coastline of Grand Manan. It really is such a gorgeous island. Whether or not I'm on vacation, I am constantly exploring my environment and I find inspiration everywhere. And so I love to take lots of pictures because my mind's eye can remember a lot, but my pictures help to bring that more to life for me and give me sometimes a frame of reference for a painting. And that's what Grand Manan did for me last week. It gave me so many beautiful views to take hold of. And I have so much inspiration for so many more paintings. I'm excited about it. I mean, from all the beautiful geology to the coastline and even the people. The people were really, really friendly and so wonderful.
on the tail end of our vacation, we landed in Black's Harbor, New Brunswick and made a stop at this wonderful little rest stop where we got to enjoy lunch and watch a deer enjoying his or her lunch. <laughs> that was a really neat and unexpected surprise. Um, and so we really enjoyed it. And uh, the deer stayed there the whole time we were eating our lunch and only moved when we got out of the car and started heading down the trail. And even then it was sort of following us, but from a distance and then it, and then it kind of ran off. But how neat it was to see that. I feel so blessed and thankful for the great vacation we had together. And now I'm feeling excited to get going on my painting process for this week. As I mentioned on the very first clip of my video, this week I'm working on a whimsical little seascape uh, or landscape, whichever way you want to call it. Um, and it's going to be a super simple process. I want you to feel very comfortable with your ability to do this because really it's all about just throwing some paint on the paper, giving yourself the freedom to explore how your brushes work, how the paint works on your paper, and also to go with the flow of the process. That is one of the things that helps me when I'm painting with watercolors. They sort of have a little bit of a mind of their own because if we're using a lot of water, and water of course is fluid and likes to move in whatever way it wants to move. And so I love to use watercolors because they sort of help me work on becoming more patient and they help me let go of wanting to control the outcome of every single thing I do. I also love adding salt, which is what I did at the very top part of that the painting because I wanted my sky to look a little bit like it had some dappled clouds. So now I'm coming in and I'm just adding a little bit more blue. I'm going to start to, to add more pigment to my paper. I'm not being overly precise. Maybe it looks that way at this point. I want my landscape or my seascape to of course show the ocean, but I also want to show some land. So I'm adding color and very shortly I'll start to add some other colors to the blue that I'm adding right now. And I'm going to do this while my paint is still wet because I want the paint to blend. The picture I'm using as inspiration for this painting was taken in landscape mode and I'm using a portrait mode um, perspective to paint my landscape because I don't know I just kind of thought it would be more interesting that way. The picture itself was beautiful the coastline was gorgeous but I wanted to give it my own special little spin and so I've decided to use a landscape uh, portrait perspective. When you're painting, always check in with yourself to see what is more meaningful to you and what speaks to you the most. And that's sort of what I do as I'm painting intuitively. I'm always checking in with myself. And that's how I make these decisions. Now I'll add a little bit of coarse grain salt and also some fine grain table salt to the wet area of the painting just to add a little bit more visual texture to the bottom part of the painting and this will help to make the whole composition more cohesive with the sky that has a little bit of that texture already. 
After adding my salt, I usually let the painting dry completely, then remove the salt and move on to the next step. I really like what I'm seeing on my background so far and I want to keep a lot of that visual texture that I've created with the salt but I will tone down some of it especially as it gets closer to the water. Um, that's just a preference of mine. Sometimes people wonder why I cover the textures I create. The thing about watercolors is that they tend to be transparent if you apply them in very light layers. So even if I do cover some of it, oftentimes what's underneath will still be showing through. Now in this area here, it's probably not going to show through all that much because I will eventually add a lot more pigment. But it's all about keeping in touch with your intuition and seeing what your intuition is guiding you to do and my intuition is guiding me in this direction so i don't question that when my intuition says go in this direction i try it out and most of the time it works out and if it doesn't necessarily work out in the way i had hoped it would work out i learned something along the way and for me that's a win-win When I looked at my reference photo initially, I remember seeing blues, I remember seeing grays, light blues, some green, and some browns, maybe a little bit of red. And so I've let go at this point in time of my reference photo, but I'm still going with what I remember. And I'm adding some of those colors here and there in my painting, building up my background so that I can eventually add some details.
I often work in multiple layers using a lot of water, a lot of pigment, a lot of salt, and sometimes when I add the salt to certain layers of paint, when I come back after it's all dried, certain marks may have been created that I didn't intend to create, and for me this is all a part of the process. I don't tend to panic when that happens because whatever shows up on the paper will either be something that I can brush off by wetting my brush and lightly brushing um, my my brush <laughs> over those lines and they sort of start to melt um, and you may be noticing that as I'm working I'm not rubbing too too hard I've got a little bit of pigment on my brush and I'm stroking the brush gently across the paper and because watercolor doesn't tend to ever really set fully and can still be soluble when you apply water to it I can still move some of those lines so it's a really wonderful medium to work with because it really is so flexible and can allow you to do so much in terms of experimentation and play and I really hope that you can encourage yourself to not be too rigid when you're playing with your watercolors to explore what's going to happen, what can happen, and then to see what you can do with what shows up on your paper. Another thing to keep in mind as you're working on your paintings is that no layer of paint or the painting itself is never complete until you decide that it's complete. And so oftentimes I'm working on these backgrounds, I have an idea of what it is I'm trying to create and before I get to the very end, sometimes the background can kind of look a little bit messy and I'll even say ugly. <laughs> so don't be discouraged by that because that's a very normal part of the painting process and it happens for almost every artist, if not every artist. The ones who are being honest anyway. <laughs> um, so don't give up because there's always more that you can do with your paint. So here I am with a background that looks a little messy, maybe even a little ugly, but I'm choosing to embrace what's there because there is a ton on this paper that I really love. And I know that when I start to add some details using my fountain pen and some black ink and I start to draw attention to certain areas of the painting I know I'm able to transform this into something that I am ultimately going to love. This painting for me is meant to be whimsical, maybe even a little abstract, and it's not at all meant to be exactly like the picture I'm using as a reference photo. Mother Nature does such a beautiful job of creating all these beautiful landscapes and all of the beauty we see outside. And I could spend hours and hours trying to replicate that, or I could give myself a few hours to explore the possibilities of creating something whimsical and fun that helps me relax along the way and doesn't put pressure on me to try to achieve the perfection Mother Nature creates. So that's one of the reasons I love to paint this way. I want to relax. I want to have fun. I want to use painting in a mindful way that helps me really connect with the present moment. And when I paint in this way, when I let go of creating all these great expectations, the magic occurs. And I start to really flow with the process. And it just kind of paints itself. It, it's really such a wonderful thing. I can't, I, I can almost not even explain it. I think you have to kind of feel it. But when it does, when you're in that zone and you start to go with the flow of your painting and everything just sort of comes together because your intuition is firing and giving you different suggestions and you're following those suggestions and you're trying different things, 
it really is such a magical feeling and I really hope you can give yourself permission to let go and explore that.
I've pulled out my dotting pen and I'm going to start adding some stippling. Because of the way I have to hold my dotting pen in order to create the dots I want to create in a more upright manner, it's sometimes hard for you to see what it is I'm doing. And on top of that, I'm adding stippling on some pretty dark colors so it's even harder for that reason. But I'm basically adding some stippling in areas of the painting while I, where I think shadowing would look nice. And I'm just going by gut feel. That's it, that's all. Uh, I'm not looking at the reference photo, trying to get too precise about what I'm seeing on the photo. I let go of the photo quite a while ago. And now I'm just working purely using my intuition and my imagination. Dark value contrast usually does wonders for a painting, as does light value contrast. And I think this type of painting is the perfect painting to add some white using my white ink pen. Now, sometimes, especially when the pens are very new, they work really well. That was my Pentel uh, Signal. Usually it's my favorite and my go-to, but it wasn't cutting it this time around because it was almost empty. So I moved on to working with my jelly roll pen and that is working way better. So I'm going to add some little white dots and circles um, just sort of at my horizon line because it's sort of going to delineate the sky from the ocean and maybe look a little bit like there's white caps. I don't know. This is all... <laughs> In my mind uh, it wasn't necessarily on the picture again the picture the picture was set aside a long time ago and now I'm just working on creating what I think will work for the painting and I do think that adding this white is gonna help so I'll add some here and I'll also add some to the areas of the painting where it looks like there's some rocks heading into the water and maybe water is crashing onto the shoreline One thing that wasn't overly obvious in the reference photo was the sunshine because it was sort of hiding behind some clouds. This is a whimsical painting and I am really making it my own so I've decided to add a sun in the perspective that it is either setting or rising over the horizon of the ocean. I've decided that this sort of darker gold called classical gold from my little CSY art gallery uh, gold palette is the best color to go in my painting. I think it's very rich. It tends to lean towards um, maybe an in-between gold and bronze and I think it's perfect for this painting and so I am uber happy with my choice. I wasn't sure at first if I should maybe go with my 
usual 24 karat, karat Merc Gold because I love it so much. But there are other beautiful golds in this palette and it's good for me to give them a try or give them a chance <laughs> every once in a while. And I think, again, that this is the perfect gold for this painting. So I'm going to add it here and I'll also make sure to spread a little bit more of that gold love over the rest of my painting to keep it all cohesive.
And with these final little touches of stippling, I think I'm ready to call my painting complete. And so next up is me taking off that tape and moving in closer for a look at all those details. Isn't it just so much fun to witness how much a painting can shift and change as you work on it? It really transforms and becomes something sometimes that you couldn't even have imagined from the beginning. And I think the creative process is wonderful for that reason. It really leaves room for your imagination to explore all the possibilities. Grand Manan, your coastlines are as fun to paint as they are to visit. And I'm so thankful once again for the wonderful time we had on this beautiful island. I'm originally from New Brunswick and so of course Damien has been with me to New Brunswick many many times. Yet surprisingly we felt like we were in a completely different world by being just on this island. It was such a magical experience and it proves yet again that you don't need to travel very far to discover something completely new. I hope our time together here today has inspired you to pick up your paint supplies and get painting or pick up your camera and go outside to explore the world around you and find your very own magical inspiration. Thank you again for joining me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!